Hello, I'm Brady Halls. Welcome to A Current Affair. First to the mouse plague, wrecking crops and ruining lives. You know, these mice are not just in the paddocks and grain sheds, they're literally eating their way through people's homes. Tonight, incredible videos from the locals living on the front line. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hurry up, get in line. It's raining mice. Just a mouse problem? I think not. People waking up in their bed and having their body parts chewed on by mice or rats. That gives me the shudders. Hi, my name's uh, Sam. We live just out of Golgong in the central Tablelands, New South Wales. And we are currently going through a really bad mouse plague. Um, it's been going on for at least the last five, six months. It's getting to the point where we want to burn the house down because they are just everywhere. They're using um, this bean, which they have been chewing on. Here they use that as like a ramp to get from outside. They walk across the curtain rod. Got a hole there, you can see. So these are my four boys. Um, we have Bryson, Ashton, Noah and Harry. We worry about the health of the kids you know, because they're in this all the time. They eat anybody food and they eat Fibby too. And they eat from our bags, put holes in our bags. And and they start climbing on my bed. Alright, so this is our pantry. I know this is absolutely disgusting, but we have just closed it up. Some dead ones on the ground. It stinks so bad. I'm sick of cleaning it. It makes me feel sick. These videos make us look like we are completely feral, but I swear we're not. We just have given up. Numerous times we've just been bitten, whether it be, you know, on the hand, on the leg, um, face. I've actually had them crawl up our tracksuit pants when we've been in bed. One night, I had my my toe eaten. They had actually ripped down into a few layers of my skin. My toes were just bleeding. It was extremely painful. Gave me some pretty bad headaches. Made me feel really, really sick. It amazes me what they can actually do. And I worry about my kids. I pray that nothing bad's gonna happen to them. G'day. Craig from Dunny Do here. How you going? Time of afternoon where I got to go and empty out these bucket traps. So basically, what happens with these traps? We have a ramp set up. The uh, mice run onto here. There's a bit of Nutella. It spins and they fall into the water. I'm catching about average about four to six hundred a night. It takes us three hours to do this usually, and sometimes I'm up two or three times a night rebaiting these. Got to keep on top of it because every one of these mice can breed. Um, a young one will breed again in 28 days and probably four to six in a litter. So 100 mice in one month can produce into 6,000 of the buggers. It's unrelenting. Constant day after day. I'm pretty tired at the moment myself. Been loading up a heap of rubbish for the tip. Mice got into a camping bag, fishing bag, ate the guts out of it, made a mess. I'm throwing out a chainsaw safety helmet. Um, mice chewed in my earmuffs and peed all over the place. I'm down in my back paddock. Thought I'd show you um, some mouse holes. There's hundreds of them, thousands of them. Last year, this was a thriving bed of cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli, and the mice have just chewed it bare. I got crook with encephalitis 13 years ago, uh, ironically from uh, mice. I've never fully recovered. I'm always worried about the side effects, what can happen with me any time. And it's a bit terrifying because it paralysed me on the right side last time and I had to re it took me um, six months to learn to walk again. It's raining mice. Oh, you never get used to it. 
yeah, it's just a stench. You don't get used to that stench. And in the middle of the night, you hear a lot of scratching in the roof. And I, I know people who always have mice run across their face and not the ideal situation for a good sleep. I know people who have got all their food in eskies and all that just because the mice are getting to it. Like we bait our house a lot. Like, and we've probably spent at least 10 grand worth of bait just spreading it across the paddocks. The other day I opened up my car's bonnet after I left it there for probably about two days. Mice were just falling from the bonnet and just everywhere in my motor. And I was banging the dash and the hundreds of mice were just running out of the dash. I'm going to show you my cupboard that I look at every morning when I get up and every night before I go to bed after I've cleaned it. Mice, devastation everywhere. And yes, there is a dead mouse. This is filmed just up from my place. This was a sunflower crop. This would have been beautiful, lined with yellow, but no, it wasn't the drought, it wasn't too much rain, it was the mice. This is shocking. This is what people have to deal with every single day because of these flaming vermin. There's no end in sight with these with this mice. Don't know what we're going to do. Until you're living with it every day, I don't think you can fully understand the extent of, of what they do. It's really heartbreaking just to, you know, have to live with this every day. And it doesn't matter what we do, it just keeps going and going and going. What do we do? Keep moving? It's a bit demoralising at times. Got to keep smiling. Got to keep pushing. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how they sleep at night. We're told apart from baiting, what is needed to get rid of the mice is a good soaking of winter rain and a run of frost. If they don't come, locals fear spring and summer will bring an even worse plague.